Hey Soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot. And in today's reading, we're taking a look at what unexpected fortune is occurring in your life right now. Can't wait to get into your reading. If you, of course, prefer to pick your pile using your zodiac signs, you will find a timestamp to that down in the description box. Okay, so let's find out what the three cards for today's reading are. One, two, and three. Let's find out what they are. So for pile number one, you have the giant's mountain. For pile number two, you have the irresponsible genie. And for pile number three, you have Naga Besuki. If you prefer to pick your pile or piles using crystals, let me add these right now. There we go. So for pile number one, you have the Amethyst. For pile number two, you have the green aventurine. And for pile number three, you have the yellow aventurine. So take a look at which one of these three piles or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And this will be the pile for you here today. As I always encourage you, in case you feel drawn to more than one pile, perhaps you feel drawn to all of the piles, trust your intuition. It is what guides you and leads you to the right readings. And once you're ready, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I will see you in your readings. Please note that in a moment, I will be assigning different zodiac signs to each pile. And so if this is something that you do not prefer, please pause the video and take as much time as you need. But if you prefer to pick your pile or piles using your zodiac signs, then my dear soul family, this part of the introduction has been created specifically for you guys. And in a moment, after the shuffling, I will be drawing out four zodiac signs for each pile. All right, so let's get straight into it for pile number one. I think I had four. The signs are Cancer, Aquarius, Leo, and Aries. For pile number two, the signs are Capricorn, Gemini, Scorpio, and Libra. As for pile number three, the signs are Pisces, Virgo, Sagittarius, as well as Taurus. 
So, my dear soul family, these are the zodiac signs and their association to each of the piles in today's reading. Um, <clears throat> if you are wondering which um, sign you should pick, um, I highly recommend you go by your sun, moon, or rising. A lot of astrologers um, advise you to go by your rising because you'll find that uh, it will be the one that resonates with you the most because it is the one that deals with your outermost world. But really, if you prefer to pick your sun sign, then this will be your pile. Uh, alternatively, if you prefer to pick your pile using another placement in your chart, feel free to do that as well. And once you're ready, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I will see you in your readings. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at what unexpected fortune is occurring in your life right now. Can't wait to get into your reading. But first, let me very quickly introduce your pile to you. Your crystal is the beautiful amethyst. Uh, your significator card is the giant's mountain. And you can see that the keywords on this card are unprepared, procrastination, and lost opportunity. And if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Cancer, Aquarius, Leo, and Aries. Welcome to your reading, guys. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always remind you, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. All right, so all your cards are ready. Let's check out, I mean, your oracle cards are ready. Let's check out what they are first so you have trine really nice harmony with the other keywords of opportunities luck flow beneficial reward synchronicity good vibes ease positivity supportive expansive overindulgent and complacent all right You have rest. As well as seeking magic. I love this card for you. All right. You have the rune. Awas. Lovely. Okay. Really nice. As well as... Come on, the, the complacent energy is so strong here. This is the root chakra and you've got complacent. Also, uh, the story associated with this card has to do with complacency. So three energies of complacency, that's no coincidence in your reading, isn't it? <laughs> it's definitely a strong message here. So let's continue to see what unexpected fortune is occurring in your life right now? So you've got the Ten of Swords. You've got the Death card. Drink me, eat me, as usual. This is an Alice deck, this is why. You have Knight of Wands. You've got an, the Knight of Swords. These are like the two fastest knights. They're very determined. They go after what they want or believe in and get it or fight it. You've got the Ten of Pentacles. Love this for you. Okay, 
And finally, I see what's going on here. Finally, you have the Magician card. Okay, so what's going on in your life at the moment? I see an interesting message here of you having an opportunity previously, a really grand one, seeing the giants here. And perhaps without realizing, maybe you didn't know better or maybe you didn't make use of that opportunity. Um, before we move on, actually, so that you can see things the way I do, I think it's best that I quickly tell you about the story. It's called the Giant's Mountain because it talks about um, a province a long, long, long time ago, as the story, as I read in the story, when giants used to exist. <laughs> Um, there was a very wealthy and large province who wished for nothing else more than to have a, their temple built on a very high plateau, like on the largest mountain there could be, or on a very high mountain up top where it's cool and, and they can see the rest of the world and build, this is where they wanted to build this great um, temple on a great mountain. So. They've built a council of all the elders and the people who can think about the, the smart people to think about how they can do that. And it seems like word reached the ears of the giants in the Far East. And they actually um, suggested that they could actually help. And when they did, they were quickly invited to participate in this um, council. When they did, they kept discussing what could be done because the this province was on a very flat plateau. So flat, as the story shows, that even their cattle, their goats and their um, cows and everything, they would run off and they would let them run off as wherever they wanted to go, as far as they wanted to go, they could always see where they are and bring them back. And that's how flat their plateau, their province was. And so the giants suggested, we can help by going back to the Far East, bringing a very huge temp uh, mountain, carrying it all the way over to your province. The people were so happy, but they said under one important condition that the people of the province must have all the necessary material to build their temple as soon as the mountain was placed. So they needed to be ready and they needed to work together in harmony with a common goal to make this, uh, um, this project happen without any lost time. They all agreed and the giants went to the far east to, and they carried this huge mountain and day by day, they were moving towards this province. And as they're moving, the people in the province started becoming lazy. They were happy that the giants were helping them. And they kind of relied on the fact that the giants had good heart and they were just going to do everything for them. They weren't prepared. And the nearer the giants came, they still weren't prepared. They didn't, ha they didn't bring the tools. They were idle. They were indifferent. And so, like I said, they were expecting the giants to do out of everything out of their goodwill. And so word reached the giants from the birds and the trees who were kept warning them. The humans, they're deceiving you. They're, they're, there's treason. They didn't, what is it called? They're far, they didn't pick up their end of the stick or they didn't fulfill their end of the stick. Their bargain. And they couldn't believe that the the humans would do that. I mean, they thought that they would didn't, they definitely didn't do it purposefully. And so when they sent out a message asking what happened there, they, the messages returned back with insults. The humans condemned them, condemned these giants, accusing, the, they accused them that they didn't want to help, that they were doing all this because they didn't want to help them, that they offered their mountain just to now walk back on their promise. And, you know, the giants were very disappointed. The humans, they've intended these unkind words. They thought they were encouraging the giants 
to work harder and faster and bring the mountain to them. But of course, it had the opposite effect. What the giants did were right before the province, you know, they given up on the humans. They felt they were rude. So they placed the mountains right outside like a, uh, the province and decided to enjoy their life, you know, their time there. They've laid it down, they went up the mountain, they had the, a blast, and they didn't respond to any further appeals from the, the rude humans from the province. And so time went by and the humans didn't do anything and started accepting their defeat. They accepted that the giants were not going to help them. And as time went by, they decided to do their own thing. They decided digging the ground and piling the dirt one on top of the other until it became a small hill. And it eventually grew to an okay, good size um, hill before the elders in the province decided it was fit for their temple and they've built the temple. Once they have, they've learned a great lesson as they passed by each other. They, re they reminded each other of that lesson, telling each other that from now on, if we were to ever ask for help from others, that we too should put an equal amount of work out of respect for those helping us. So what am I seeing? Especially that you have the Awas rune, um, it has to do with trust. So isn't that interesting? I feel that you were given a long time ago a great opportunity. Perhaps you were a little bit complacent with that opportunity, thinking it would last forever, which is something we all go through, thinking it would always be there. You wouldn't imagine it not being there. And so you could have taken that opportunity a little bit for granted. And so the, the opportunity back then passed you by. And you had to take the long road. It was very painful with the Ten of Swords. Um, I think you could have gotten back many times thinking, regretting maybe what you've done, remembering, and that brought you pain a lot of the times. Here you can see in the Death card where something ended abruptly in the past and you can see the figure crying here. Perhaps you really regret this, of course. So something in common that I see when Alice is putting out the fire, there's smoke. And I remember in this part of the story, she's, she was looking at the what images would come out of the smoke from the candle. And you see, this is the same in the magician card, the smoke. There we go. The smoke creating all of these elements. So I'm seeing that at some point you decided to leave the past in the past, leave the pain behind and stop regretting it, stop looking back. And just like the people of the province, you started relying on yourself. You started, you stopped saying, why did this happen? I should have done this. I should have done that. And you ended this chapter of your life and you started reimagining what you could do, what type of resources do you have so that you can make this dream happen for yourself. And the unexpected fortune, my dear pile number one, is that within this whole story, it seems like it was very painful it really was very painful especially having something so good being taken this way and the hard lesson that we all have to go through when we don't realize something in our lives and only when it's gone so you're building trust in yourself and you were so strong and adamant about building it for yourself, just like the people in the province started building it for themselves. And so the unexpected fortune that is occur occurring in your life right now with the Ten of Pentacles is that you are manifesting not just what you wanted, because that's the Nine of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is the pinnacle of that element. 
And so here, this talks about achieving even more of what you wished and you dreamed of. And so this talks about how your potential is able to create for you what you want without the assistance that you had in the past. Because here in the death card, what Alice has ended is this drink me, eat me. She's not looking at it anymore. Um, it's not exactly aligned with the story, but I I'm seeing, I'm telling you what I'm seeing in the cards. It's like, no more eat me, no more drink me, uh, no more quick wins, quick uh, getting it. I am relying on me and only me. And so you've got your mental power full force. You have faith, you're, you have your plans, you're, you're, you can't see anything but your dreams being achieved with the Knight of Swords. And with the Knight of Wands, you have your power game on, your energy, and nothing can stand in your way. These two are the fastest knights in the deck. And so this definitely talks about how you're moving very fast, faster than you can imagine, how your trust in yourself um, and maybe the trust of the people around you, maybe watching you r roam like that, or the trust in yourself is um, equally bringing trust in the people around you, how you've learned that lesson so well. Because pictures also represent memories. So you've learned so much from the past. And just like a magician and seeking magic, you will manifest this into your life right now. This is the unexpected fortune. And you will create that flow of great luck and opportunities into your life. So let's get more information about how this is going to look like for you. Oh my God, the Ace of Cups. What you've envisioned, you will get bigger right off the bat. So what you've envisioned, perhaps the inundation of blessings that uh, this past thing was supposed to get you, it, you're going to be achieving in real life something much, much bigger and much more valuable than that. And also something that cannot be broken, uh, such as that past energy. You've got the King of Cups. You both have your healed emotions, your healed, your learning, the learnings uh, that you've had acquired from the situation, which includes taking action, going after it, respecting it on one hand. And you've got luck, great luck and fortune, which we see here on the other hand. I love seeing this for you. You have, wow, you've got the nine of cups. <laughs> Your wish is coming true. You have the two of swords. And you've got the ace of pentacles. Oh my God. I can't believe how your cards are so synchronistic. Everywhere. What you envision shall come true. It's unbelievable. And also, this is like the walking mirror in Alice in Wonderland. I definitely see what you don't see coming, especially with the two arrows. It's like you are experiencing one life at the moment, and it's like shifting realities. Um, what you're not seeing is that these days, you will be shifting from one reality to another, getting into a new reality that is full of blessings, full of manifestations that is even beyond what you expected when you first decided that for yourself. And it's kind of like this is the lesson that the universe wanted you to grasp, not to depend on other things. Yes, they do come sometimes and you did get them in the past. But I think the universe is teaching you a far more important lesson. First of all, that when you are able to envision something, you are able to create it into your own reality. And once you grasp that lessons and had faith and believed in yourself, which is also the two of swords, having faith, it's like you removed this magic within you. And that magic is um, being enforced as you move with every step that you take. Because every step that you take is full of power and belief. 
And very soon, with the Ten of Pentacles, you will have more than you are imagining. More than what you are imagining. The Nine of Swords. What is the Nine of Swords here, please? The time, the rabbit and the time. Oh, I think you were afraid previously of running out of time. Uh, you're like, oh my God, time's running. How am I going to do it? So what does that want to say? <laughs> the lover's card and the three of cups. I feel like this last card is actually talking about guidance for you. If you are worried about time, that time's going to pass you by. The lover's card shows you that it's a matter of choice. That time especially in Alice in Wonderland, is an illusion. So it's definitely signified in your reading here. You know how time in Alice is, is really not the same as we perceive it to be. You know, the Mad Hatter is constantly having tea at six o'clock, <laughs> right? So it, this is definitely talking about time being an illusion, don't be afraid of time. What matters is that you eventually get and enjoy what you want. Um, and so your guides are saying here with the lover's card, the choice is yours. Make the right choice. Continue on your path. Continue to, to get what it is that you want. And you will be very fortunate with that because it's going to get you more than what you are expecting with the Ten of Pentacles. You will find yourself living a comfortable life, so vast with abundance, enjoying every second of it, and living in fortune and yeah, huge inundation of fortune and blessings, living comfortable living happy, living like you have everything that you wanted. This is happening, starting to happen right now for you. So this is the time when you want to continue. And I don't think you need guidance on that. You're already doing that. The guidance really is on not focusing on time and choosing to celebrate life and to celebrate the awesome things that life gets you, regardless of when it's supposed to happen. Okay, let's take a look at the cards below, which we didn't look at because we, I wanted to find out what the Nine of Swords was talking about. This was talking about how your vision is coming true right now for you. You're going to be very fortunate with that. What you, you're envisioning is coming true right now. Um, maybe you can't see that with the Two of Swords, but have faith. Uh, your life is shifting in a different direction. And you're going to be very soon, very much fulfilled. You know, the nine of cups is wish fulfillment. It is a wish fulfillment card. It's a card of feeling emotionally fulfilled. The nine of cups has a tiny snail in the Rider Waite Smith, signifying that maybe things take time. Um, maybe life takes us in a path we're not expecting. But eventually, with faith, and with, through following guidance, or even through mere luck, that wish does come true. When it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. And the reason I say that is because the snail can walk uh, on a wall. You'd think when life is taking you on a weird direction, that you'll fall, that, um, that it's weird, it's a weird perspective. But, but at the end of the day, it always takes you towards your wish fulfillment when it's meant to happen. And, you know, the mucus of the snail is allow, allows it to go in weird directions. Not everyone or every animal can do that. And it's like, don't compare with the timing yourself to others. Sometimes um, you might just have different powers or different ways of achieving your goals. So forget about time, forget about everything. Just let everything take its course. Cele choose to celebrate the beautiful things that life gives you. And here, the last card is the Five of Swords. It's in conjunction to the Lover's card. There is a battle that you still need uh, at the moment to win. The, the swords are the mind. 
Oh, you know how the Queen of Hearts here in Alice, she's always going off with her heads. And this is a very fa famous scene of the cards doing it wrong and then realizing that the Queen wanted the flowers to be red. So they tried to rectify it and color uh, the roses red. I feel like um, maybe because you're running out of time, your guides are saying don't take the short way out if it's not the right way out always do the right thing don't don't take any shortcuts just because you're rushing do it right and don't let your mind play games on you with the five of swords don't let your mind win over you choose the right thing and choose the positive thoughts constantly especially as you're manifesting this right now in your life and you will see my dear pile number one that you're meant to reach fortune i just heard fortune and fame this is just something that i heard <laughs> so maybe you're reaching fortune and fame uh, but you're definitely reaching your great fortune in manifesting more than what it is that you have envisioned and my dear pile number one this is exactly what i see in your reading uh, in terms of what ex unexpected fortune is occurring in your life right now. Actually, before we go, I want to see how is this manifesting for you? How about that? Seven of Wands. Knight of Pentacles. Right. <laughs> unbelievable. They're all out. It's really unbelievable. This is talking about how... You're guided to um, face every challenge. Take it slow with the Knight of Pentacles. Slow equals fast. So take it easy. Take it slow. Don't rush. When you do it right, it's going to move quickly for you. Um, slow and steady wins the race with the Knight of Pentacles. You'll find yourself day after day tackling one challenge after the other. One after the other. And fortune rains on you. And as always, your main message is what you've envisioned will come to life even bigger. And my dear pile number one, this is exactly what I see in your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And I do just want to let you know that I do have a productivity ebook that could really help you out in this journey. If you're interested, you will find a link to it down in the description box. It's small, straight to the point. You won't procrastinate reading it in the first place, but you will find great advice in how to become a productive person right away, all while enjoying this journey. Many people throughout the years have read it and they've enjoyed it. You will find the reviews on the page. And I've also recently just released an e-planner to go with it. So every chapter that you read right away on the e-planner, you can apply it with all of these uh, charts and games and everything that uh, helps you fill it out all you need to do is fill it out and start on your journey right away if you would like uh, to check it out you'll find a link to it down in the description box and i'm sure it could really help you on this path of making this happen for yourself and you will be very fortunate in this endeavor and my dear pile number one thank you so much for tuning in sending you so much love and so much emotions of courage towards you and energy for you to manifest this very soon and my dear pile number one i'll catch you in the next reading bye Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at what unexpected fortune is occurring in your life right now. Can't wait to get into your reading, but very quickly, let me introduce your pile to you. Your crystal is the beautiful green aventurine. Your card is the irresponsible genie. The keywords on this card are laziness, cutting corners, and atonement. Oh, I feel this one. And of course, if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Capricorn, Gemini, Scorpio, and Libra. Let's go again. There we go. Welcome to your reading, guys. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always remind you, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. 
Okay, so let's first check out your Oracle cards. You've got Virgo with the perfectionist. It's so opposite to <laughs> this card here, the irresponsible genie story, which I'll tell you about in a moment, depending on your reading. Let's keep it there. The keywords here are analytical, planning, perfection, hard work. This is so opposite to the story. It's funny. Helpful, detail-oriented. Oh, my God. Reliable, confident, skeptical, overly critical, and ruler of the sixth house. Okay. You have decision. Hmm. It looks like this beautiful deer is at a crossroad. Hmm. Determining its fate, perhaps. You have... Ooh, look at that. Talking about crossroad and determining fate. You've got the heart chakra with growth and something was growing, stopped for some reason and then started growing. So really interesting actually now you also have the rune gebo oh i love this rune it's the rune of kind giving so let's keep it here for a while and take a look at your tarot cards and see what unexpected fortune is occurring in your life right now i see these cards right there this one moved and then again this one did move and I see these right so let's check out your tarot cards I feel like taking from the bottom up you've got the five of pentacles with material trouble mm -hmm. you have the king of pentacles what opposite energies, just like these two, <laughs> opposite energies. Okay, material trouble, king of pentacles is prosperity. Here it's laziness, irresponsible, cutting corners with Virgo, it's perfectionism, planning and hard work. And then you've got in the growth card, something dying and something growing strong. And you've got two paths here, which is kind of like showing us maybe that there is two paths opening up perhaps for you let's find out oh let me hide this because of the youtube rules hold on there we go i do hope these rules change soon for the communities on youtube relating to art tarot anything history and not having to cover beautiful art anymore but anyways you have the full card mm-hmm You've got the Six of Pentacles, and I feel like this one moved, so let's take it and put it here. And you've got the Seven of Pentacles, Success Unfulfilled. Again, it's opposites, isn't it? The Star card is all about a wish fulfillment, huge thing happening for you, and the Seven of Pentacles is that opposite energy of success being unfulfilled. You even have it here with the Six of Pentacles, material success. So I don't know where to begin. I mean, let's begin with the obvious that opposite energies here. The opposites. I'm seeing with the Gebo rune, let's start with that actually. I'm seeing with the Gebo rune, that there is a huge gift and a huge uh, opportunity being presented to you by the universe. Um, speaking of the universe, this god, this uh, card relates to, it's a Vietnamese story relating to the emperor of heaven. So I feel like the heavens, God, whatever you believe in, is sending you a great gift. But you are guided here it's like it's still in your hands for you to just like the uh, plowing it is your responsibility to make it happen in fact that's the story here let's take it from the very beginning 
Now we've, we know that there is a gift being presented to you by the universe. How you treat it is how it's going to give you back. And I think now it's starting to make sense, the growing. Oh, okay, okay, it's all coming together. So let me take you from the beginning with the awesome story of the irresponsible genie. So it's a vis Vietnamese a legend, as I just read about this really interesting story of how the emperor of heaven... Um, after working on the earth, wanted to create um, humans and animals where they all work together harmoniously. And so that worked out and the emperor of heaven was so happy, then started creating needs for the human, uh, which meant that he would f suffer from pain and fear as well as joy and happiness. Um, and then... Um, he decided to send two banks for the animals and the human beings full of crops to make sure that they are happy, well-fed, uh, they're fulfilled, that it's enough for them to continue to realize their part in, in his creation. So he sends his, uh, so his loyal servant, Genie, with the two golden banks. And he was given the instructions to meticulously cultivate each seed in the bag and then scatter the smaller seeds in between them. And so Jeannie felt like this was going to be treacherous work. He was lazy and felt like he wanted to come with another good idea to make this as, an, as an, such an easy task as possible. So his idea was to fly up high and take a bag, cut it, cut into it, take a knife, cut into the bag, and from up high, he would scatter the big uh, seeds first, and then when it's done, he would take the other bag with the smaller seed, cut it, and then scatter it, and it will go in between the bigger uh, seeds, or, or the plants that grew as a result. And so, in such a hasty act, without checking, which is so opposite to the Virgo energy that is detail-oriented, he took one of the bags, cut it out, and then by the time the seeds fell and were reaching the ground, he realized the huge mistake that he has done. He realized that he released the smaller seeds first. And so all of a sudden, when the seeds touched the ground, they turned into this wild grass that begin, began to grow everywhere. And so panicking to quickly fix this mistake, now they took so much of the land space, he quickly cut out this other bag. The large seeds now fell into the ground. And because there was no place for them to plant themselves to fall into the ground now that the wild grass is taking up so much space most of them went down broken into got shattered into little pieces they smashed only a few survived and the situation got really really bad so he hurried to heaven and then decided that it would be wise of him not to reveal his mistake so after a while, the humans on earth started rallying and protesting. They complained that while they had enough seeds uh, and grass for the animals to feed on, they didn't have um, crops, enough space for the crops to grow. They, the crops were too little here and there, and they had to travel a long time to get the grains and had to work such long hours now to be able to plant these crops that were already few. And um, yeah, they were complaining about all of the hard work versus the, the results that they were getting. And the emperor of the heavens was really confused. And so he decided to descend to earth and see what's going on for himself. He quickly realized what happened there and re discovered a genie's mistake. So he returned to heavens and summoned Genie for a scolding. The mistake was terrible and it had to be atoned for. And so Genie's punishment was for him to descend. He had such a, 
such a like a tough one tough punishment to rectify this mistake and since the human beings had to forever deal with this mistake so did genie he too had to forever fix his mistake and this time he had to follow the, his instructions to the letter and so as he worked forever to help the humans he always his the word the voice of the emperor of heaven rang in his ear Genie will forever eat the grass that he may grow in abundance and must endlessly serve the humans who were forced to cultivate the crops that the buffalo would never eat. And so he's eating something that he doesn't like and he forever has to serve the humans to rectify for this mistake. And so looking at your cards, I'm seeing two paths for you. Honoring the gift that the universe is about to give you and to work hard to um, work hard and meticulously to respect that gift will take you on a path of great abundance. But being lazy about it, maybe you'll miss on this opportunity or you won't be able to, uh, uh, what is it called? You won't be able to saw what it can give you. And you might go on a rather long road of some trouble, some type of scarcity. By the way, even if you go down that path, you will not be forever down that path. You always have the capability to decide um, to do things different and you shall always grow even if you take that path but what I'm seeing is it's your choice you've got two things that you can water either you're with the Virgo your honor your deep your planning um, your respect towards that gift to work hard for it to give you in abundance one day or to miss out on the opportunity on this gift and take the heavier road and so it's interesting here that you've got in the full card the baby and the wolf the baby here by the way is um, um harpocrates um, which we'll talk about in a moment, but I just want to mention the dichotomy of the two, the the baby and the wolf in the in this full card, where the baby represents the birth and the growth, while the wolf represents um, the fierceness and ending of something. So we can see birth and death, and so you're starting a new journey, where if you honor the honor, the gift that the universe is going to give you, it will lead to joy, which is what the yellow flowers represent in this full card, which would lead to joy. Or not dealing with it right may end this opportunity uh, for you. And thus the constant dichotomy of energy in your reading. Material trouble, material success, star, uh, the seven of pentacles in Thoth and so on and so forth over and over and so you can see death or rebirth and growth it's really all up to you but if you shall, shall honor it and take it seriously and um, work with it with great honor and detail it will give you so much fulfillment and especially material fulfillment in your life and this is about to begin for you. Perhaps now we can take a look at your tarot cards. I hope it does show us what is this opportunity about and maybe even what your guidance is to reap the benefits of this opportunity. So you have the Six of Swords with earned success. You've got the Nine of Swords with Despair and Cruelty.
you have the Eight of Swords with Shortened Force as well as the Six of Cups with Pleasure. Okay, and we've got three more cards here. So, about your unexpected fortune. With earned success, this opportunity will come to you very easily, smoothly with the Six of Swords, smoothly. And it will show up in the form of earning results for what you've previously done. And while this is true, you are guided not to take that for granted and to honor that opportunity because if you take it lightly, just as we saw the story of Jeannie here, although it's earned, it might lead to despair and feeling like a cr it's a cruel experience with the Nine of Swords, as we see here. On the other hand, with the Eight of Swords, although it could feel like it's going to take up a lot of effort in the beginning, it says shortened force. Just like Jeannie, he had one task, he was supposed to do it um, well in a short span of time rather than doing it for the rest of his life. Here we can see that if you take the necessary time to put in that force that needed attention and work hard, you, it will lead with the Six of Cups to absolute pleasure later on. And so in the grand scheme of things, it's a little bit of time paid to get endless joy versus not putting that time and perhaps suffering for a long time. And with all of the swords that I'm seeing here, it your guidance is mostly focused on the mind because how you think and hence how you feel will determine how ultimately how you will act. And so you're guided to work in silence in tranquility and in silence. And that's why you have, by the way, Harpocrates here, who is the God of silence, confidentiality, secrets. Of course, there is definitely a message of don't talk much about, that's a very important element. Don't talk much about this opportunity. Keep it to yourself, especially in the beginning. But it, it's a representation, as you can see here, with the gesturing of silence of hypocrisies. It teaches that you can reach joy through silence because spirituality and, and um, spiritual knowledge and wisdom is found within and so I'm picking up the idea of not talking too much about it, not being boastful, not being so proud. Perhaps that energy will make it feel more and more like it's earned. May You might take it for granted. And so there is this energy of being calm, being silent, honoring it within and to, and to honor it you are guided to uh, respectfully put in the care of, especially of paying attention to exactly what is needed, not rushing to do the work needed for it, to, to not cut corners unless it's, a, it's working easier rather than, like smarter rather than harder. It's planning well and it's putting in the necessary work because you will forever Live in the pleasure of material success if you honor that opportunity. It's right there, the center of your reading, the star. It's everything you had hoped for and more. Um, and it's really all up to you which energy you choose to plow or water. It's really all up to you. Uh, it's Think about it as short-term effort that leads to long-term uh, gain rather than instant gratification leading to long-term pain. 
And so the decision is yours. Right, so let's take a look at what these three cards are. You have the Eight of Wands with swiftness, and I know it talks about swiftness, but look at the hiding here, the silence, the hiding. There's a strong message here about not showing it in the beginning for, for some reason. I guess protecting it in its early stages. You've got the Five of Wands with strife. And you have 14 with temperance, with alchemy here, something working together, creating momentum, which is the Eight of Wands, and then poof, magic happens, the rainbow bridge, the hitting the target, being on goal, energy working, manifestation happening. So this is the manifestation of a wish the fire and the water i have great news for you one of your biggest wishes if not the biggest wish that you have will start to happen and that's the unexpected fortune for this pile but here's the catch this wish will be presented to you in the very thing you are struggling to do in life. How can I explain this to you? It is that energy of shifting skills where you shift your energy and that energy takes you, just like the rainbow, to the other side of the fulfillment of the wish itself. So think about, let's say, for example, you wish to be a huge Hollywood actor slash actress. For example, that's like your biggest wish in life. And you've like um, tried different small movies and so on. A and then one day it happens. You get that phone call from the assistant producer, a huge assistant producer in Hollywood. And you might be, uh, you might be casted for a huge movie. That's like everybody's going to know about you once this movie is out. So that opportunity has appeared. Now, for this opportunity to actually fulfill, you have a lot of other people who they're choosing amongst. And so you have to work hard. You have to pay attention to the script. You have to know your lines well. You have to revise many acting techniques that you know. You have to be calm. You have this. You have to do this. You have to do that. I'm, I don't know how this works, but I'm sure they have a lot of work during that small span of time uh, to be accepted for a great opportunity like that where there are many talents applying or being considered for this life-changing role. Um, it's exactly like exams, by the way, where students work so hard uh, to study for that exam and once they put in all that effort, they take that certificate forever. And so it's exactly that. The, the number five is very significant in numerology. And that's why the fifth Sephiroth, the Gabura, is associated with Mars. It's that power you need to change things. Think of the singular numbers from one to nine. You'll find that five is right in the middle. One, two, three, four on one side of the scale. Six, seven, eight, nine on the other side of the scale. And the five is that Mars energy, that strong force that you want to put outside of your comfort zone, that energy that you want to put in to shift the scales to your favor. And so this is talking about how you will learn to find internal quiet, to handle a huge, I don't want to say struggle like that, 
Nothing outside of your hands at all. Nothing out of reach. But it will require that Mars energy, that discipline, that, that Virgo energy of hard work, discipline. In your case, it's hard work, discipline, proper planning, paying attention to the detail. Um, I don't think it's like in this pile anything that has to do with facing fears or doing something you're scared of. I think since we can see exactly what it is about, it's putting a lot of, well, it could be in any area, but you are guided to put a lot of energy and focus on the detail and do what you maybe momentarily do not feel like. It's like putting instant gratification to the side burner. Forget about it now with that opportunity. It's rolling up your sleeves, feeling the quiet and putting in that effort every day. Because with that, the Eight of Wands here shows that things will start to move um, for you. Here with the Five of Wands, you've got the first deacon in Leo. It's in Saturn, which means having the confidence of Leo to push through that initial challenge. And then with the Eight of Wands, the first deacon in Sagittarius associated with Mercury. This is traveling far. <laughs> so it's like a furnace that pushes the rocket out of space and forever your world will change, taking you from one sort of life into a totally different other on the other side in a short span of time. To handle that, your guidance is to find inner quiet. Through your inner quiet and your inner peace, you will be able to do this like a piece of cake. And that, my dear pile number two, is exactly what I see for you as your unexpected fortune that you absolutely deserve, but as guided, must work hard to shift the skills to your favor. I'm so happy for you, my dear pile number two. May you always be blessed. And if you've enjoyed your reading, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload, and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye! Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at what unexpected fortune is coming in your life right now. Uh, before we begin, let me very quickly introduce your pile to you. Your crystal is the beautiful yellow aventurine. Your significator card is the Naga Basuki uh, with the keywords addiction, boundaries, and enablement. And if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, in that case, the signs for this pile are Pisces, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Taurus. Welcome to your reading, guys. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always remind you, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. Okay, so let's get straight into your reading. Your cards are ready and shuffled and see what is that unexpected fortune that is occurring in your life right now. Can't wait to get into it. Uh, and let's, let's check out your Oracle cards first. Whoa, so we've got two dragons here. There is definitely an emphasis on the dragon. Uh, and you see the heart there. This uh, dragon in this story, the Naga Basuki, was a loving dragon. So I'm, I'm really starting to see where the emphasis is. Really nice. I'll tell you about the story in a moment when we take a look at the rest of your cards and see what part of the story uh, is related to the reading. You have the root chakra with complacency. Mm, yes. All right. You also have moon with emotions. The keywords are moods, intuition, personal needs. Um, Monday, uh, the sign cancer, the unconscious, comfort, feelings, Family, home, reflecting, yin and femininity, right. Okay, and you've got the rune, inguas. Okay, this actually makes so much sense. 
All right. Let's take a look at your tarot cards. So you've got the five of swords. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have the temperance card. The six of wands. The six of swords. Mm. This is a really cool uh, spread. The nine of wands, right. The knight of pentacles. And I think we can definitely fit one more card. And you've got, wow, the ace of cups. Interesting, interesting. So it looks like your great fortune is coming in an area of your life where your shadow is causing you to be complacent or like the universe recognizes that uh, it's not that easy for you to take action in the area in which you're encouraged to take action in so you're getting great help in this area so the part of the story in the naga basuki actually it's not the part of the story i can give you like a very quick summary so there was it's a it's a story from indonesia and it says a very very long time ago there used to be a kingdom called Daha, the king uh, was called Begawan, his son was Manik. Now, his son was uh, addicted to gambling. He couldn't stop himself and he got himself, himself into many debts. The awesome thing was that Begawan, the father, uh, was able to bring a lot of fortune and magic and long story short i was i found myself i was getting into the detail long story short and um, uh, manik kept getting himself into debt the father would help and then he seeked the help of the naga dragon who was so kind to help several times warned you know he wouldn't help but then manik got into debt again long 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 story short both the father and the dragon were kind enough to continuously help uh, despite the warnings. But because the son was so, I, I would say, complacent and would go back and back and back, um, his fate wasn't so bad because the dragon at the end of the day, like his fate was that he died, the dragon brought him back to life, but then he was very restricted in the way he could live his life. So it's kindness all through. The fate is watered down all through. And he had his father who was wealthy, lost all of his wealth wealth for him to pay his deb debts back constantly. He had the dragon who, the, the kind dragon who constantly gave from his wealth to pay off. But then when, when the dragon found there was no discipline, uh, wasn't as given giving. But again, the fate was so kind. So what I am seeing is that as your great fortune, is that the universe, as well as kind people who will appear in your life, will help you in an area where you really want to change. And it's not easy for you to change because there's so much shadow, especially with the root chakra, weighing you down. It's not making it that easy for you to change the shadow. That doesn't mean that it's impossible. It just means that it's going to take time and a lot of gentleness. And this is what the universe is offering to you. That struggle, you're trying to be something that feels at the moment larger and bigger than yourself. And so the universe here is coming to provide you with an equal power so that it helps you build your muscles in order to slowly but surely transition and build the confidence, build the strength, surely, slowly but surely, until you're healing. And so you cannot imagine the type of help and support and offering of resources and having everything set up in the kindest way ever to help you in this um, misfortune in your life to turn it into a great fortune. And so the universe realizes that uh, there's a lot 
that you need to deal with, especially when it comes with the moon card to your emotions. It is there to empower you left, right and center. Also, there's like a prayer that needed to be done every time they visit the dragon. So I would say that um, this is, yeah, because the sun at some point stopped being uh, grateful. The sun started taking this for granted. And so I also see a message here with the great fortune that is coming into your life. The universe is reminding you to constantly remind yourself to always stay humble and uh, grateful about this help. Because if you don't remind yourself to do that, you can lose track of this great fortune and um, you, won't, you will forget to have the discipline if you're not in the state of gratitude to help yourself out of it. And so this whole goal is to help bring your real strength out. And the Ingwa's rune talks about how something is ready for you to take, but you must, it's the same thing. You must put in the effort and put in a lot of care to make sure that it actually comes into life. And I always give you this example. I'm sure if you watch the channel a lot, you, <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say. It's that time when the harvest is out and you wanna be careful not uh, to lose it by, you know, insects eating it or animals eating it or a disease spreading. You want to be very careful during that time or in the ancient times when a child was born. You want to be very careful because the uh, child death was, was a lot. You had to take good care of that huge blessing that you got. And in the same way, the six of wands shows and along with the temperance, you know, the temperance, I'm going to say what I was going to say here, but the temperance, since we're seeing a huge highlight on the um, light at the crown, in the Rider Waite Smith, the crown of the temperance is up the mountain, showing that what you visualize will soon manifest into reality. And so this is talking about how all of the support given to you, which you're going to be very fortunate to have, it's kind of like everyone has to work so hard for for it, you get it easy. Exa for example, the biggest universities want to take you. For example, the best jobs want to take you. And the, you get the best guides to help and explain um, the trade uh, of the business, how it's done. You get, you get the resource to fund your ideas. It's like you get it all just so you make it happen and you get it all because the universe realizes you're not complacent because you choose not to, but it, it seems like there's a heavy shadow, a heavy sense maybe of insecurity, a heavy sense of, I don't know, uh, fear, a huge sense of fear. I think with the root chakra is fear, huge sense of fear, um, instability or something. And, the, it's giving you that needed stability so that you can little by little grow that muscle, grow that power, grow that confidence. It's going to happen steadily and you will be winning if you, two things, uh, are remind yourself to always be grateful so that you can remember to appreciate. Uh, it will keep you alert of the type of resources and blessings in your life that are there to help you thus will keep you motivated to continue and at the same time exactly that it will take you to where you want to be and not be stuck in that energy okay so let's take a look at the rest of your cards you have the queen of pentacles hmm. the five of pentacles The Sun card. The Ace of Swords. Wow. You have the Eight of Swords. As well as the Three of Wands. So I f I'm seeing that you're getting a, universe, a, a message from the universe here that you have a heroic story to tell one day. 
that your your story one day will become so popular and it's going to become one that others learn from how it's possible to go from not being able to uh, do something or have something to living in your dreams to have your dreams being created it's like you will it's like you will be an example for others who will wake up to feeling oh i am uh, uh, why do i think i'm so stuck if other people are doing it then i can do it too and perhaps we'll follow your example the steps that you have taken if towards the light, towards that great success that you will be creating and, and imitating what you've done. Here, it is showing you that so long as you are on the path, you will greatly be heard and you will always be abundant. But if you do veer off course, um, the, your fate will still be kind, but it may be harsh um, for you to experience. It won't be as harsh as, as perhaps others get it, but it may be harsh for you to experience. And <clears throat> although it is 100% in your hands to do, the reading is predicting according to your energy that you will, in fact, make this happen and you will gain the strength uh, and you will have that blessing that wish that you are wishing for that um, goal that you're wishing for for because with the hummingbird which always knows the way always knows where its nectar is and um, it's kind of like it's um inevitable that you will find the way clearly but only if you stick to it. So let's ask, how will this opportunity present itself to you? What are the details of this opportunity? The first thing, let's see that first. What is this opportunity and what are the details of this opportunity, please, for pile number three? So you've got the Queen of Wands. Wow, the star card. Oh my God. You have the Empress. Oh my God. And you've got the Fool card. So this is in fact very close to what I thought. You will have powerful people in powerful positions. People who are abundant. People who are at the top. Who will focus on you very unique people who will pay attention to you and will instantly want to help. The pomegranates, they represent the underground uh, from Persephone, right? So they will, you will be surprised how they pop into your life. Um, Queen of Wands, maybe this is uh, in conjunction to the star. This could even be a very famous persona or a very famous company who is willing to nurture you, to maybe um, give you generously and are very focused with the butterfly here on your transformation. And maybe they will sign a deal with you for you to start, to start right away. 2.0 shows me that they're giving you another chance to dig at this or to get at this. In return, they are expecting a lot of loyalty from your side towards yourself, towards um, helping yourself. They have a lot of faith in you, a lot of hope in you, in what you can do, and they viciously or, or greatly believe in you and are willing to share their resources, their power, maybe even their fame to help you out. Okay, let's see what they will be exactly expecting from you. 
King of Cups. Nine of Swords. Ten of Cups. As well as the Queen of Cups. <laughs> Looks like with the King of Cups and the Queen of Cups, you're very lucky because you're going to be dealing with people or these companies, these people will be dealing with you with a lot of grace, knowing that you, they understand your fears very well. They understand your worries. But with the owl, they also see you as very intelligent. And they are willing to help you with happiness with the Ten of Cups. They're willing to do it gently with you. So what are they expecting from you? I, I see two hippop hippopotamus parents who are gently teaching their child. And so this gives me the idea that they are giving you the nurture and care you need for you to learn something and to grow. Yeah, they want to provide um, a safe environment, a safe place for you to grow and learn how to do what you're meant to do. And there will be, they will always have their ears. They will always give you their ears, very open to listen to you. And they will have a lot of faith that you will progress and they will be watching you progress. They recognize that you're shy, maybe recognize that you are ashamed of something perhaps. Uh, they recognize that you are tired and they don't want to come and force you. They genuinely want, they understand that they, it must be done with a lot of nurture, love and care. That's very strong in your reading here. And so you will grow with, the, with this Ten of Cups. You will be very happy and you will grow through a lot of love and care. Remember, that's the first thing I saw in your reading. You will have people around you who are adamant to help you with a lot of, with a kind heart. Do you see? It's even in the story, the kind heart, they are strong, they are powerful, they have resources. So, you know, the dragon here would shake up his tail, would shake up himself and gold and rubies would fall in order to help for Manique to pay for his debts. So it's kind of, it's the same thing here. They're, these people helping you have the resources, have the power, or maybe this is a company, maybe this is a, a type of organization, whatever the situation is exactly. They will, they will like sponsor you, but with so much love, giving you another chance. You know, they understand that your journey is going to take time. And so long as you are on track, they will be patient, waiting, happy to listen to you uh, and happy to watch you grow. And your reading, the energy of your reading is predicting that you will, in fact, make it to the other side and be living the world of your dreams so much so that you are meant to inspire others to do the same. Maybe even with the sun card, you are a wake-up call for so many others to heal themselves in that way as well. So a great example for others. Okay, so how will these people approach you? The Knight of Cups, they will offer it to you. Yes, we did see with the pomegranate out of the blue. They will... Um, give give you the news and it will make your heart happy it will like affect your heart right away it's like hey we would love to help you please give us the opportunity to do that also another thing this is a frog and it reminds me of the prince and the frog so um it's kind of like you're seeing this person maybe you already know this person slash company or something you see them, maybe you see a lot of their advertisements, advertisements out there or something, but you will really see who they are, what they're made of, who they actually are 
when they do give you that offer in fact. You will learn a lot about them and you will realize that there's actually a lot of good in the world. It's not just all bad and selfish. There are good people out there who want to do good. Six of Cups. You know, for some of you with the Six of Cups, this could be family. A sibling, a child, um, a family member, because you have the father here as well. It could be your father. Very detailed. I'm sure it's going to resonate for some of you. But yeah, most of you, it's being offered from somewhere around you. That's powerful. I think the cards answered most of the questions I had for you. So yeah, my dear pile number three, it looks like you will be supported with a lot of love, but you're guided to take it respectfully and not take it for granted because this is an opportunity from the universe for a second time to help you achieve what it is that you deserve to have. You will be living in the world of your dreams. And my dear pile number three, this is exactly what I see in your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And my dear pile number three, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.